My name is Stuart Archer Cohen, and I'm here to talk about my book, The Army of the Republic. Uh, takes place mostly in Seattle, United States of America, in uh, the very near future. When I started working on uh, the Army of the Republic, I was really interested in the revolutionary impulse and how things get out of control and how things get out of balance. I originally thought of setting it in Argentina, but as I saw the United States mimicking more and more the conditions that that plagued so many Latin American countries in the 70s and 80s where you have just this massively corrupt government and you know massive sort of sneaky corrupt privatizations of, of government functions and that sort of thing uh, and a sort of more and more control of the government by business interests when I started to see that I felt like no this book this book really has to be set in the United States people look back at the American Revolution and you know they they think it's they just kind of think of a bunch of guys in wigs and some barefoot soldiers in blue uniforms and guys on horses and that's not what the revolution was. It was messy and it was ugly and you only had 30 percent of the people who wanted to who break away from England and you had 30 percent of the people who were like I'm a British citizen. These guys are ruffians. You know I don't want to I don't want to break away from the king and then you had another 40 percent in between is just like don't bother me, okay? So you have, you know, I just want to do my business, I'm not interested in politics, and I don't want to be involved in this. And so you have this, the war of these two 30% on either side. One of the characters in this book is a man named James Sands. And what he is, he's a government crony. He's, he's built by himself, you know, from scratch, this huge corporation, multi-billion dollar, multinational corporation, that privatizes bankrupt municipal water supplies. Whitehall is a corporate security uh, company that uh, is so intermeshed with the government, both, both having former military and intelligence people in its staff and very tight connections with those people who are serving those functions still in the government, that you cannot tell where the government ends and Whitehall begins. And I think we're, we're getting there in this country. You know, and I don't think that's what the Founding Fathers had in mind. The Army of the Republic is you have these kind of 20-something left-wing hacker, cracker, tree-sitter, tree-spiker guys, and they hook up with this right-wing guns and ammo um, uh, ex-military guys that live on the outskirts of Seattle. And together they get together and form the Army of the Republic. These revolutionaries want to pay the debt. They, they want to, they see this country as this was a great democracy that's been corrupted and we've got to redeem that democracy by paying with our blood if necessary. Another model that's prominent in the book, that's a huge part of the book, is these civil organizations and, and their goal is to demoralize the government to the point where it loses its legitimacy and it sort of has no one left to defend it, you know, and they have a very nonviolent way of doing that. Even Che Guevara said, as long as there's any sort of democracy, no matter how rigged, no matter how corrupt, and no matter how fraudulent, as long as there's a vote, then armed struggle is not acceptable. Even Che Guevara said that. A lot of revolutions really come down to a situation of people killing their children. That's what Tiananmen Square was, that's what the 70s in Argentina were, and people always think it's going to be somebody else's children, but in a sense, in a sort of larger sense, it's people killing their own children, and the scars of that last a long time. I think the situation coming forward in the United States is not a right versus left situation, I think it's, or Republican versus Democrat, I really think at heart it's a, um, it's a, people who are for rule by the people and people who are for rule by corporations. You know, we've talked so much about politics, but what really drives this book is what's going on with people at a human level. Well, this has got like a lot of kind of intellectual content. It's got a kick-ass plot. It's got, you know, sex in hotel rooms. All my books have sex in hotel rooms. I want to make that clear to everybody. Okay, so it's got, and to, I, I think, wow, it's got, it's got everything. And yet a publisher looks at it as like, well, it's not exactly a thriller because it's, you know, got all these ideas and it's not exactly literary because it's got all this, um, you know, 
uh, thriller stuff and and the sex in hotel well you know how can you be against that but <laughs>